G'day everybody, it's me Kenny Raceboy here again just doing a quick installation guide of the Nerf PD crash bar and skid plate set from happytrails.com. So let's get underway and I'll show you how all this um, fits together. So of course the first thing that we get to do is take all the fairings off the bike. So as you can see I'm taking off the top one at the moment, there are a couple other ones as well. In total there's about four. So one on top, uh, one down the bottom here, and also uh, one behind the fairing as well. Um, so we'll take all those off and take the panel off. And as you can see there is a screw holding the two panels up the top together as well. So with the panel off, we can get access to the rest of the bike. As you can see, this is a picture of the right, uh, left hand side. Sorry. Uh, once we get that out, we can take the uh, radiator guard out as well. As you can see, the uh, panels have been taken off both sides so we can get clean access to uh, the rest of the bike. Uh, so next up, we are taking the skid plate off pretty easy there's a uh, force four bolts holding this one on uh, two up front two down underneath alrighty so once we've got the skid plate off we've got access to the engine mounts uh, these guys here we're just going to take the bolts out there I believe they are a 13 and a 14 millimeter socket and spanner uh, we're just going to take those out save the bolts because we're going to need them and uh, we can get the uh, radiator guard in Alrighty, so once we've gotten the bolts out that are holding the brackets in, what we're going to do is we're just going to remove everything including the mounts for the skid plate. So just go ahead and remove those. You can pretty much do away with those because we're not going to be needing them for the installation of the crash bars or the skid plate. So here we are with the, uh, with the newer radiator guard and uh, highway pegs. You can of course uh, choose to get this assembly without the highway pegs, but as you can see I have chosen them. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take the previous bolts and we're just going to thread them through and uh, put the bolts back on essentially. So next step after we've got the uh, bolts all through the holes, we're going to just put some thread locker on the, uh, on the bolts themselves just to make sure the uh, the nuts don't rattle loose and uh, you don't end up with a uh, loose motor. So just tighten them up and you should be good to go and we can get on with the next step of the uh, installation. And uh, also of course we're just going to tighten them up using our 13mm and 14mm spanner and socket that we were using earlier. And of course uh, the next step of the operation would be to put the nerf bars on after we've gotten the uh, radiator guard all secured. Um, these bars are the nerf bars of course, they go on either side of the bike covering up the fairings and what we're going to do is we're going to take the 8mm bolt uh, that is supplied, of course putting one washer on either side, just going to thread it through like so and we're going to also put a nylon uh, nut on the other side as well just to make sure it doesn't rattle loose. Uh, so just tighten that one up as uh, best you can. Leave it a little bit loose so you can uh, move it around whilst you're working on the bike. Alrighty, so the next step is to install the front bracket. Uh, there are two bolts to go through and bolt from behind onto the crossbars. Um, you've got two little brackets that uh, sit either side as well that clamp around the tube. Uh, this is probably one of the hardest parts to get right. It is a little bit fiddly. Uh, the front bracket is, of course, the smaller one with uh, little in engravings on them that say up and have a arrow pointing forward. So, smaller one on the front and a thicker one at the back. Uh, as you can see, I'm putting the cross brace in. The, uh, the right-hand cross brace goes in first, of course, being that it is the non-threaded one. Um, just sits on either one of the, uh, either one of the bolts and uh, make sure they all fit nice and snug, of course not uh, hitting your uh, radiator coolant. So once we get that side all together we can go ahead and uh, do the other side as well. This side here is using the threaded one, as you can see I've already got it all tightened up. Uh, so 
uh, thread your bolts in, tighten them up, it's threaded, uh, and you can get the uh, bars on. Uh, so once we've all gotten that together nice and snug, you can start putting your fairings back on. This is, of course, the left-hand side. Just fit the fairings in. Of course, the crossbar goes through the gap in your fairing. And uh, what you can do is you can uh, put your uh, bolts back in. Of course, one at the top, one at the bottom, one behind, and a screw on the top. Alrighty, so once we've gotten the right hand side on, we can go ahead and put the left hand side on as well. Um, now you see, this is where I did make a little bit of a mistake. Um, I actually put the fairing back on before I uh, put the radiator guard back in. Um, so as you can see, I'm tightening the bolts up, which is uh, the incorrect way of doing uh, this installation. But um, as you can see in this shot here, I am actually squeezing the radiator guard in and uh, around the bar and behind the fairing. So if you do happen to do it this way, it's no big deal. You can uh, get around it without too much of a hassle. So once we've got the fairings back on, you can see the cross members uh, come through the fairing. Um, you can pretty much line up the nerf bars now, which cover the fairings on either side. And uh, what you can do after that is you can start putting your bolts in. So as you can see, they line up fairly well with this one here. Just thread uh, your bolt through like so. And you can use your Allen key and uh, spanner to tighten them up. Of course, once you've got one side done, do the other one as well. Just tighten them up as uh, snug, uh, not too tight, uh, being that we're going to fit the front ones as well. So with this one here, um, same oil deal with the other one as well. Just tightening them up with the spanner and the Allen key. Make sure they're tight. Um, as you can see with this one here, the uh, the bars didn't actually line up as well as I'd hoped them would, but um, with a bit of a uh, with a bit of tightening, uh, they do go together, so a little bit of an interference fit with that one there, but uh, no big deal. Alrighty, so once we've gotten everything nice and snug and tight, we can go ahead and fit the skid plate. This one here is, of course, black one. You can get a silver one as well. Um, and also there are a couple brackets that go on the bottom, one and one eighths uh, brackets. So, easiest way I found to do it was uh, Fit one bracket and then slide it over the bar on the bottom. And then after you've gotten that one on, it's the uh, it's pretty easy from there. All you have to do is you can uh, slide the bracket over and thread the bolt from underneath into the thread. Just tightening it up with a Torx bit with this one here. I believe it is a T40 Torx bit. So you will need uh, a special tool to do that one if you don't have one. So tighten them up nice and snug uh, to each side, of course. Uh, once we get that done, there's a U-bolt that holds the skid plate on. U-bolt goes around the same bar that we attach the radiator guard. Uh, we've also got a little aluminium block that goes on as well, which sits behind the skid plate. Uh, so just put that one on and we can slide it through the two holes that are in the front of the skid plate. course once we've got the u-bolt through what we can do is put the uh, washers and nylock nuts on uh, so with these ones here being that they are nylock you don't need to put uh, any kind of thread lock on them because they will self-lock um, so in the next shot we have uh, started to tighten them up of course tightening them up equally uh, not too much yet because we do have to align the plate up uh, make sure everything is nice and straight So once everything is nice and secure with the uh, U-bolt, we can go ahead and start tightening up the uh, brackets on the underside of the skid plate. Of course, using the uh, Torx T40 bit again to tighten these ones up, and we should be good to go. Alrighty guys, everything's nice and secure, all the bolts tightened up, and your bike is much, much more protected. So uh, you can get out on the road and do some nice touring without having to worry about your bike being uh, scratched up and whatnot. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed and I'll uh, catch you in the next video.